Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp and today we're going to be discussing classes in object oriented programming. Now this is probably the biggest thing that you'll deal with in if you're taking this as an introductory programming course or any level one course this is going to be the biggest thing that you'll be dealing with and it's very important that you grasp this concept because pretty much from here on out we're going to be using objects when it comes to actual programming and you will use them in real life. So what are objects? Well basically the best way you can look at them is an actual object in real life and what objects have are characteristics or traits now every trait can't be uh, described with the same data type for an example let's say uh, in this example we're gonna be calculating BMI so we're gonna have to have a name of our patient so let's say we have a bunch of patients so we have their name we have their height and their weight and we're definitely going to need their height and weight in order to calculate their uh, body mass index or BMI, right? So, so yeah, these objects are going to contain all these different data types in addition to a bunch of functions or methods. They're they're called the same thing, functions, functions and methods. I call them functions uh, that will do all this calculation for us, and it will all be in a separate file called a class. So, uh, let's first figure out how to create our class. So right click up here, click add, and go down to class. Sadly, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this all in one video, but it's probably better if I don't anyways, because it's a lot of stuff. So it's good to always call our class whatever represents whatever we're talking about, what kind of object. So let's go BMI, since that's what it, its purpose is, and we'll click add. So now as you can see, we're now in a whole different file bmi.c sharp. As you can see, it's over here too, and we can still go back to our form one. There's our form one code and a form one designer. Let me move this over. There we go. Okay, so now we have our little class here. So let's go back to our form one designer first and double click our show button. So we're going to want to be able to create our own object, right? So first, we're going to need to create our variables that we'll be using inside of our class the name, height, and weight. So first, we're going to have to fetch the name of our patient, so string name, is equal to text name dot text. As simple as that, we've done that plenty of times. Then next we're going to need their height. Let's say that's an integer, int height equals, and we'll have to use the convert dot to int, and text height dot text. There we go, and then the last variable we'll need is their weight. Let's say that's a double, just so we have three different data types we're working with here. And we'll call that text weight dot text. And there we go. So now we have our three variables. Now, when we're dealing with these variables inside of our class, there's a certain um, term that you'll hear often in object-oriented uh, programming, and that's called encapsulation. And basically, that's keeping the information that's being processed there or uh, basically it's you keeping as many functions in there and all the data types you're using in there private so that they cannot be seen in any other classes that you make in any other forms which are classes or um, or any other namespaces so no other namespace will be able to read that information so that they can't be tampered with by uh, anywhere else in your application you want to keep it safe so that's encapsulation so let's go into our bmi.c-sharp little thing here and at the bottom of the class is where we usually typ typically create our what are called member variables and these variables are basically copies of these variables that we'll be using so we have their name height and weight we're, we're gonna want to declare them inside of our class as well but we'll give them different names so first we're gonna use the private keyword first because that's where encapsulation comes into play. And let's call it uh, string new name. Sorry if I misspell any of this. So we have new name. Then we'll have private int new height. And private double new weight. So basically these are the three same pieces of information that we're going to be throwing into our class and using as. So now we have our member variables. So can we create our object yet? No, we can't create our object yet because we don't have any functions in here. We need something to process this data. So the very first piece of information, the very first function that we create in here 
is called the default constructor. Even though the default constructor is not always necessary, it's very important that you always have it inside your class at the very top. Or it doesn't have to be the top, but that's where it's convenient to place it. And what the constructor does, what the default constructor does, is it doesn't process these uh, three variables right here that we created. Instead, it'll uh, declare these three member variables that we created in, in this class to their null values. And you'll see what I mean. So in order to create a, uh, a constructor, all you have to do is use type in C O T or well, what was it? C T O oh, C T O R. Click tab and then tab again, and there you go. And you'll notice that the constructor is the same name as our class, and it has to be. And even though we won't be returning any values for some reason, if I throw void in there, I end up getting an error during runtime. So don't put void there. I, I'm not quite. I don't quite understand why we can't do that. But so basically, it's just public and then the name of the same name as the class. So this is our constructor. So we're going to set new name equal to an empty string, a new height equal to zero, and new weight equal to zero as well. But because new weight is a double, make sure you put 0.0. .0 so that when any calculations are done it'll be recognized as a double so this is our default constructor so not too useful right because we can't actually use any of the information that we put inside of our text boxes because they're put here and when we click our button show we're not even using them so what you could do is use what's called an overloaded constructor so let me type that in and you, there will be advantages of using this, and I'll show you when you'll use a default later, because this is so much, excuse me, that's my chocolate milk there. Um, too much of this stuff is being used at once. So you could use the CTOR again, but I'll just type it in manually, public BMI. And okay, so um, notice here that the BMI here, where we would typically get an error here because these are the same name so in order to avoid getting any errors here we're gonna have to pass in some parameters here now what parameters would we pass in here well these three pieces of information of course well not these three we're gonna we're gonna pass in these three even though they're the same thing really so we're gonna have whoops string name int height and double weight and then basically we're going to be passing in those three pieces of information that we got from our text box here. So these three pieces of information will be passed in as a parameter into our overloaded constructor and what it will do is set our member variables equal to whatever we typed into our text boxes, these three. So we'll put new name equal to name then new height equal to height and new weight equal to weight. There we go. And the reason why you might be wondering why we're doing this is th um, this is again this is where encapsulation comes into play. We can't just access these variables by themselves or we can't just use these variables that we pass in because we don't want them to be tampered with later when we're you know you, if we're using these in calculations for an example. So okay so now we have our overloaded constructor. So basically the difference between the default and the overloaded is that all the default will do is set our member variables equal to their null states and our overloaded constructor will set our variables or will pass in what we typed into the text boxes and set our member variables equal to those values that we typed in the text box so I guess we could create our object now even though we can't actually use these functions yet and we'll see why in a moment so going to our form one dot c sharp okay so there we go we have name height and weight equal to those text boxes so now let's actually create our first object so in order to create our object we first type in um, not a data type but actually the name of the class so the name of the class is BMI then after that we can type in whatever we want to call that object if we were doing students for an example we could just throw in like a student's name like my name Adam uh, but let's just go patient one patient one there we go and then set that equal to then since we're creating a new, since we're instantiating a new object here 
we're going to use the new keyword and then type in BMI again. Now, since we typed in new BMI with these empty parameters, what's going to happen is it's going to automatically use the default constructor right here. This will automatically use the default constructor right here. So notice that uh, going right here, since we said new BMI, it's going to access our default constructor and just set all our member variables to null. Now, could we just, uh, whoops, right here. Now, could we just do this right below it? Could we type in patient1 and then, uh, oh, whoops. Sorry about that. So could we just type in patient1 and then pass in, let's say, our three pieces of information? Name, height, and weight. Nope. Patient1 is a variable bit being used like a method. Well, apparently we can't use our uh, overloaded constructor that way. So how do we use our overloaded constructor? Well, what you do is, and in case you want to use your overload constructor, is to actually throw in your three pieces of information in here instead, not just go patient one in parentheses because that's not gonna, that doesn't exist. So we'll just throw in name, height, and weight this way. So doing that, now we'll actually be passing in our three pieces of information from our text boxes into this new object that we created, so into the class. So then it'll read this default constructor and be like, wait a minute, this has no parameters. You pass in three, so we can't be using this constructor, so we're going to go to our overloaded constructor again, and each of these three will be equal to whatever we passed in. Then our member variables will be equal to these, um, will be equal to whatever we passed in. But that's not really good enough. We're, we're now setting our member variables equal to something, but what if we want to actually get that information? Okay, so um, this is about the end of the part one of this video, so I would like to continue on to the next vi uh, video in which we learn about accessor functions and mutator functions. So I'll see you uh, in part two.